Hi everyone, Shane Stevenson, uh, curator and director of museum collections here at the Buffalo Naval Park, and today's video is another one with Kelly Sullivan, the great granddaughter of Alita Sullivan, who christened the USS The Sullivans, and she is her own sponsor of USS The Sullivans DDG 68. We take her to the memorial compartment. We have her talk a little bit about the boys and the school that they went to, because we did just recently get some artifacts from the church and the school that the five Sullivan brothers attended, and they had their first communion at. And then we also talk about Kelly's uh, role as a sponsor uh, for her own ship, the DDG-68, that uh, is currently steaming back to America and being home ported in uh, Mayport, Florida. So we hope you enjoy this video. It's very poignant, and we did one last uh, earlier this year with her on our YouTube channel, so please check that one out as well. But here we go with the video. So earlier this summer, Kelly, uh, was she's always been in contact with the Buffalo Naval Park, but she uh, said, you know, that for the St. Mary's Church and School, uh, there's been some preservation issues at, the, at that structure, and uh, some people started to preserve some of the artifacts and the items from that uh, church and school. And so Kelly also got involved, of course, because this is where the five Sullivan boys went to school, and as Kelly just mentioned, that's where they got their first communions. Uh, and so she reached out to us, and you were donating to three different museums certain items from the church and the school. Uh, we received a stained glass piece from the church, some it. obviously you could tell pewens, and we have some other items that are not up, you know, cornice pieces, uh, that we'll be putting up uh, during the off season, but it's to humanize the brothers again, and this is what this compartment I think is for, is to humanize the family and the brothers. And so using these artifacts as that story uh, is really important for visitors, uh, for the Sullivan family. Yeah, great. Well, I, I think it looks amazing. What I was telling the story of too just a minute ago was when I graduated from the University of Iowa, it was my first substitute teaching assignment. I was terrified. I was 23 years old. I'm like, what am I going to do with these kids, you know? So it was my first day of teaching, and I taught at St. Mary's Catholic mm -hmm. School. Um, and I remember I went in that day terrified, and I was walking down the hallway, and I saw something on the corner of my eye, and I looked over, and there was a picture of the five boys right there. And it was just a goosebump moment. I thought, oh, my gosh, they're here with me today on this first day of my, my <laughs> teaching career. So um, I, I, I tell that story because I, I remember that day like it was yesterday, 28 years ago. But, um, gosh, it, it was so neat just because I felt like their spirit was with me on that first day. Because let me tell you, getting up in front of those kids is kind of scary. <laughs> so it was, it was really, really neat. And then some of you didn't hear the story about how we got these. So one of my former third graders, Taylor Morris, you got to look him up online because he's, he's amazing. But Taylor um, was in my third grade class, and he wanted to be a Navy SEAL. And let me tell you, he came this close. He really wanted to be a Navy SEAL. Um, he joined the Navy and, and worked at, with EODs. Is that right? Is that what they call them, the EOD ordinance? Is that right? Yes. And um, Taylor was over in Afghanistan. When he, the blast went off when he was working, and he lost all four limbs. And he survived, and he's doing great things. But one of those other moments that I will never, ever forget was when his dad called me from Walter Reed. And I told him, I said, Dad, this is my fault. Um, anyway, uh, Taylor still lives in Waterloo, Iowa. He has a beautiful wife who supports him and a beautiful little girl named Rosie. And I cannot wait. Well, Rosie's been here. She was here two months ago. So she was on the ship two, year, two, months, two months ago. So anyway, the Morrises came out for a wedding. They were coming out here for a big wedding. And I figured they were all flying in. I thought, oh, they're flying to Buffalo. So they sent me a message. They said, Kelly, we know that you love Buffalo and Buffalonians, so tell us what to do. So I was given a list of which restaurants to go to. And I was telling them, make sure you go to the military park. So they were heading out for the wedding. And I was so excited that they were going to get to see these things. But the artifacts, we didn't have a way to give them to Buffalo. And to ship them would have been really, really expensive. And the people who are saving the St. Mary's, they're like all of you guys for the Save the Sullivan's campaign. These folks that are working to preserve this church, they have worked tirelessly. They are, they are working so hard and they're doing great things. 
So I'm so proud of those people at St. Mary's. They're just like you guys. You know, they're, they're making things happen. They're moving and grooving. So anyway, they were saying to me, Kelly, where should you put these things? And I said, well, I know of three places they need to be. They need to be in Buffalo, New York, because that's the Sullivan's. That's where the Sullivan ship is. It needs to go to the Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum in Waterloo. And then Fredericksburg, Texas has a beautiful um, exhibit on the Sullivan's there. So anyway, the Morrises are going to this wedding, and I'm out Friday night at this band drinking beer. <laughs> a couple, Whoa. I know, we're surprised, right? And everything started, I, I'm talking to Taylor's mom, who's, you know, I call them my parents, because they're my third grade parents. I had two of her boys. I had both the Morris boys. And she's talking about this trip to Buffalo. I said, oh, I already told Taylor what, what to go see and what to go do. And she goes, yeah, Dan and I are driving a 19 person passenger van out there. And we're going to meet the kids out there. And then we'll have a, you know, a van to drive the kids around and the whole family around. I said, wait. And the beer is coming to me, you know. And the five Sullivan boys are giving me these ideas. I said, if you're going out there, would you please take all these artifacts? Because they're quite heavy. And so the next morning, because they were leaving the next day. Yeah. You know, when you talked about those five boys, Paul, that, that are always looking over us and giving us these great ideas and helping us meet people. Me like Douglas Schum exactly, <laughs> telling you to pick up the phone at 7.30 in the morning. That day, I was sitting there, like I said, the summer, and I'm like, oh my gosh, will you take this stuff to Buffalo? So the next day, I went over to Morris's house, got the 19-person Javan, which was empty because they were just taking their bags, and filled it up with all these different artifacts, and they drove to Buffalo and brought it here. And then they sent me all these pictures of the whole family here at the Naval Park, and uh, I'm very, very proud of all that you guys do oh. to make this place so great. Mm -hmm. You have to know how much it means. It, it is. It's absolutely wonderful. And I know the you know I, I keep in touch with all the a lot of the sailors from the, that served on this ship, the DV 537, and those sailors, you know, they're they're getting up there in years, and they said, Kelly, we're going to give as much money as we can to make sure we keep our ship afloat, and the Sullivan's Foundation. Is we're, we're dedicated. We've got two donation buttons. One is for the foundation, and the other one is for Save the Sullivan's campaign. And we will never stop supporting this park and the ship. And Kelly, on, be, on behalf of all of us too, um, you inspired someone to serve. So don't ever feel bad or horrible about it. So thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yes. uh, what a great day. What a great, great day. What a beautiful day. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for being here. It's, it's been absolutely beautiful. It's an emotional week. Um, Veterans Day is always really, really tough for me. And uh, so is November 13th. It's all in the same week. And I had parent-teacher conferences this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, Just that added stress. And, and, and Kelly, yeah. don't, don't forget to tell them the day that Juno was discovered. Yes, St. Patrick's Day. Yes, oh, the Juno. Yep, the Juno was discovered on St. Patrick's Day. It was. It was amazing. It was about two years ago, right? Yep. Um, 2018. 2018. Yeah, 2018. Yeah, there's a picture yep. right next to Paul. Yep. But you yep. tell the story that you were in Mayport. Oh, now that's a good story. I was yeah. just telling. I, I got to work with Navy Chief Selects. So on Saturday, right the day I was flying out here, I had like 50 Navy Chiefs that are going to be pinned as Navy Chiefs come from Minneapolis. They came to the Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum. So I got to spend the 79th anniversary of the sinking of the Juno with these chief selects. And they just, I just talked and talked and talked to them. But I was telling them the story because we have in the museum, we have the video of when the RV Petrol, Paul Allen's group, found the Juno. And I'll never forget that day because the thing is, is I go to visit the ship a lot. And every time I visit the ship, just like when I'm on here, it's very emotional. Like when I step on board today, what was going through my mind was my great grandma, thinking about how 79 years ago she christened the ship. 79 years ago she christened the ship, you know? So anyway, I'm in um, Mayport, Florida on DG 68, the second ship, and one of my favorite captains, Ryan Tillotson, was retiring from the Navy. And when you retire from the Navy, you get to pick where you want to go. Where do you want to have your special retirement ceremony? And bless his heart, he chose to have it aboard his favorite ship that he <laughs> served as a captain on. So I'm in Mayport, Florida on the fantail of DDG 68. And I always get all kinds of emotions. I mean, incredible emotions when I'm on that ship. I truly feel like I feel the boys' spirit. I mean, truly feel the spirit of the boys. So that particular day was tough. There was stuff going on, and I could feel it. I could feel it so deep in me. And I remember thinking to myself, what's going on? You know, what, why am, what, what, what are these feelings that I'm feeling on the fantail on this retirement? And I thought, you know, it's Ryan's special day. He's retiring from the Navy on St. Patrick's Day. That's why I'm feeling this way. 
Well, that's not why I was feeling that way. Because at that moment, while I was on the fantail of the ship named for my grandfather and his brothers, the RV Petrol discovered USS Juno. Mm -hmm. At oh, that moment, true. at that oh. moment, when I'm on that fantail, and I didn't know it at the time, right? So it was spring break, so I was a teacher on spring break. I had to get back Monday to go teach the kids. And I'll, you know how you, like, something's happened to you and you never forget where you were when it happened? So I was at O'Hare Airport, O'Hare Airport, in front of the Wrigley Field Bar, restaurant bar. I was not drinking, by the way, I just, <laughs> just walking by, just walking by. And I was, I was exhausted from travel because I'd been in Florida visiting my shipping crew for the retirement. And the phone rang, and it was one of my dear captains, Rich Brown, who's a two-star admiral at the time. I'm at the Pentagon, Rich Brown. So I pick up the phone, and I'm like, Rich, what's going on? And he goes, have you heard the news? I said, what? He said, they found Juno Kelly. They found her on St. Patrick's Day. Oh my God. And I, I, was just, I was just floored. I'm like, what? He goes, yesterday. Yesterday they found the Juno on St. Patrick's Day. And, I, and that's another one of those things where you know, and, and I've spoken to the guys that, that, that I got to meet the crew of the RV Petrol the men that Paul Allen hired to find these World War II ships. And I talked to them and they said, Kelly, we weren't even supposed to be there. They'd already found, I think it was the Indianapolis, they were on their, they said, those boys were with us that day mm -hmm. when we found them on St. Patrick's Day, when we found the Juno, when we found their grave site, they were there. And I'm talking to the guys that were there, you gotta see the video, the video's out there. And, and they're, they're spelling it. Now, and here's the other part of the story. I, I didn't watch the video because I was super tired. I didn't get back to like 11 o'clock at night and I taught the next day. And so I got to school and my phone had been blowing up from the media and everybody calling me. I'm like, wow, this is, this is a huge deal. And I got to school and the kids had started to hear about my third graders. And there was a little boy named Bob in the group. And he's, he, we, we, got, we got the, I said, you guys, let's watch this together. So the first time I saw the grave site, of my grandpa and his brothers and his shipmates was with my third graders. And you know, I, I pressed play and we watched it and that little boy Bob, he goes, oh my gosh, Miss Sullivan, there's the J, there's the U, because they were showing the ship and you could see the letters just clear as day. And it was just, I, and I'm, I'll never forget him saying that. He's like, look it, there's the J. He was just awestruck as I was. And then it was about five days later, because everybody was asking me, how are you feeling about this? Because I went to my dad, and I said, Dad, how do you feel about this? What are you thinking? Because everyone thought, you know, you feel closure or something. And you don't. You really don't. It's, it's a bittersweet thing. You know, it's a bittersweet thing. And, and my dad and I had some, some good cries about it and, and really talked about it, because that's his dad. You know, they found the gravesite of his father, where they perished. And I w I'd gone down to the copy machines. So this is about five days later. And this is the way grief works. You know, grief is so weird like that. I got my copies, and I left my kids unattended for a few minutes. Um, I went and got the copies, and I was walking down the hallway to my classroom, and I just burst into tears. I mean, it, it was just the most the weirdest thing, because nothing was on my mind. I was just walking down the hallway with my papers, and I just started to cry, you know? Um, so it was, it was very emotional, very emotional. But again, I'm one of those serendipity things where those five boys and the Lord's looking over, us and all these great things are happening and uh, that was a special special time and I'm I'm super excited to keep doing these special things with all of you guys and you need to know that you are a special part of my family always 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 and I am a good Catholic girl that prays a lot <laughs> and uh, even though I drink beer and uh, I pray for you all the time uh, Buffalonians Buffalo, the city of Buffalo, people don't understand how amazing you all are. And I do go back to Iowa and I tell them how great you guys are because it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. The way you guys come together and the love that you have for your community and for this Naval Park, it's, it's, it's fabulous. And I, I can't tell you how much I admire you for all that you do. I know it, it's your job, but it's more than that. It's not just your job. It's not just your job. And I see how much you put into it. And uh, it means the world to me how much you care for this ship and all the ships here. Thank you, you guys. Doing some research, I found an article from March of 43 that your great-grandmother uh, had written in what's called the the American Magazine, which was a national magazine back then. It's got this cute little kitten on the yeah. cover here. 
Uh, but she wrote about losing her five sons and the fact that she could have done two things, right? She could have just kind of retreated inside to her grief, or she embraced the national uh, emblem of sacrifice that your family had become. And so she obviously took that second course and embraced the tragedy. I have not, actually, I have not had a chance to read it. You've sent it to me, but I don't know that I even That's read the whole thing. How long is it? It's, uh, you know, they break it up and stuff like that, but it's it's probably five pages, you know, really? throughout the... Yeah. Uh, Isn't that amazing? I got to get a copy of this. We got, if you find another one, let, yeah, me know. Okay. All right. All right. let me know if you find one. I want to buy one. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, what you talked about, about... What she said that she, you know, don't I could put my head in my what would you say it again? Put in my yeah, head. just she could just yes go into her grief and just not do anything or right. embrace the tragedy and be an example for other families. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's why I admire her and my great grandfather so much was the way they continued to move on, and that's why I work hard to do that. I can't imagine. I think about that a lot. Though, how how exhausting that must have been for her and emotional, because you know seventy. Eight, 79 years later, I'm doing it. And it's so emotional for me. You know, and they're not my boys. It was my grandpa and, and, and my great uncle. So I, I, I just think about her so much and her spirit and her love for her country, you know, and, and that's the big thing too. It's just like growing up with Sullivan, people ask me about what was that like? Well, I had this wonderful role model to look, you know, to mm -hmm. think about. And being patriotic is the, is the number one thing for me. Is just making sure that people understand what she, my great grandma said, the boys did not die in vain. The boys did not die in vain. And telling the story of not just the Sullivans, but of all veterans. Um, so what I do, and when I go visit DDG 68, I do, I think about my great grandma so much and how much she did for USS Sullivan's DD 537. You know, when you, I'll never forget, I was here with my daughter, Kelsey. Mm -hmm. We were here for a Sullivan reunion my daughter was about 10, so it was a long time ago. And we were down in the mess fix, you know, in the mess hall. And we were sitting there in the booths where the Sullivan sailors, you know, USS the Sullivan sailors eat. And it was just the two of us. And I could totally feel her spirit with me. And we sat there, my daughter and I did, and we read the letters. We read the letters that she would write to the crew, you know. And, and my daughter, Kelsey just loved it. And it was so emotional because she'd always call them the boys, you know, dear boys. Mm -hmm. And then when she'd sign it, she'd say, love mom, you know. And so she lost those five boys, but she, she truly felt like the crew of DD 537, those were her boys. Mm -hmm. They quite literally became her boys. And she put her whole heart and soul into being the best sponsor of the Navy and taking care of the Navy ship. Right. She wanted to take care of her ship. And I, I honor that and respect that. And so when I christened DDG 68, <clears throat> that's exactly what I was thinking about. That day in 1995 when I christened the ship, I was thinking about how she must have felt that day, March mm -hmm. 1943, when she christened this ship, mm -hmm. the USS Sullivan's DD 537. And so I, that's what I love to do. And, Instead of picture or letters now, I do videos for the crew. Oh, so, cool. Technology. Yeah. So I like to do videos. I've done about four or five of them um, recently. Um, they The crew likes to get the videos, so then they put them on, the, on the, um, the ship email, and then everyone can see it. So it's neat. So, you know, back in World War II, my great-grandma was writing letters, <laughs> right. and now I'm doing videos. Right. So I've got a friend who's really good with the camera. And so we go to different Sullivan sites in Waterloo, Iowa. So we go, there's a rock that has the, the boys painted on it. So we did a video there. We did a video, we had a, a big flag, uh, Flags of the Fallen um, ceremony. Oh, okay. So we had a video done there. We did a video um, at the Lone Sailor statue um, at the Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum. And I sent them to the crew. So that's my way of staying connected to the crew. Um, we just had a, more technology, a big online auction to raise money for the homecoming. Because the Sullivan's DDG 68 is on an epic around the world uh, deployment yes. right now. They're on a big deployment, and so they're getting ready to come home. And so the family readiness group, FRG, they need money to help have a big party. So anyway, they um, they sold off all these things, and then you could share the link 
So I shared the link to everybody. I'm like, hey, who wants to help? And if, if, you, didn't, if you didn't buy anything on the silent auction, you could uh, donate money. So, right. so I help with that. And I got a really cool, I won one of the silent auction baskets. And it's a really cool United States Navy, like bedazzled wine glass, like wine tumbler. Nice. And it says USN on it. So, um, so I try to support the, the crew as much as I can. I love to go visit. Um, I know my great grandma visited this ship often. So that's another thing that I do is I go visit DDG 68. Um, I pray for them all the time. That's an, a huge way that I can support them. And I know that my great grandmother uh, prayed all the time for uh, DD 537. So those are some of the things that I like to do to, to stay connected to the crew. Um, I'm Facebook friends with almost everyone on the crew. Nice. So that's another fun thing to do. Nice. And um, technology. Yes, technology again, <laughs> lots of technology. So that's a way that I can stay connected to the ship since they're in Florida and, and when they're deployed. So I like to send them letters and or, you know email messages, right. text messages, Facebook messenger messages. So those are some of the things that I do. But I, I, I'm proud to be so involved with DDG 68. Uh, the, the ship, I, I call her my firstborn because she came before my daughter was born. So. Um, She's, yeah. she's very, very special to me. That oh, is. that's great. Yeah. And there's a beautiful video because they were just with the British, yes. right? And the uh, the uh, carrier task group. Yeah. And so there's a wonderful video on YouTube now where she's steaming past to say goodbye. And you see the five gold star battle flag flying. And it's a beautiful. It is. It's a beautiful ship. And, uh, you know, the, you're emblematic of that oh, ship as well. Thank it's, you. Oh, I love being involved in it. And, you know, another thing that I do that my great grandma did too is she would have sailors come to the house that she didn't even know, people that didn't even serve on the Sullivans. And being the good Irish Catholic woman she is, she'd say, are you hungry? And then they'd stay and eat. And then my, my great grandfather being the good Irish Catholic man would say, well, are you thirsty? thirsty? And we'd give him a beer. So, um, and there was one sailor that stayed for six months. Not kidding. Wow. And, yep, stayed for six months. Well, you know, the house was empty. And uh, you know, in the movie, The Fighting Sullivans, Genevieve says, hey mom, we've got plenty of room. Maybe we should invite a sailor to come stay. In the movie, they talk about nice. that. So um, she, they did take right. in sailors. And so when I, my DDG 68 sailors also come to Waterloo, you know, 79 years later, and they stay with me. Nice. So I, and I make lasagna for them and I always mm -hmm. have cold beer for them. So um, I like that my great grandmother would always open her house to her sailors. And that's what I do is I open my house to my sailors too. Nice. So that's a neat thing too, yeah. Just one last question, Kelly, yeah. if you don't mind. Uh, so what does this raising of the million dollars, what does that mean for you and just for uh, this ship? And then leading into DGD 68 too, right. like, you know, maybe some preservation with her as well. So right. for the million dollars being raised here uh, with everyone's help, right. what does that mean to you? You know, it's just, this is, these ships are a symbol of all the sacrifices from our veterans. You know, my crew is on a seven month deployment right now, so they're sacrificing. So the fact that we are preserving these ships, the Sullivans and Little Rock and the Croker, this is a beautiful place for people to come and pay their respect for all veterans. And I think that's so important. So the people of Buffalo and all the people all over the world who donated to, to save the Sullivans, uh, the Sullivan family is so grateful, so very, very grateful because you know, this this is where people can learn about our, you know, this is great education. You know, on a Saturday afternoon, bring the family, bring the grandkids down here and come and, and learn about our, our country and our veterans. So my my biggest thing that I would say is, is thank you because people have worked so hard to make this happen. And to think that they raised the money in just seven months is absolutely amazing. So I, 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 I'm excited to, you know, to tell my third graders about this and say, hey, what are you doing this summer? Get your parents to do a little road trip to Buffalo, nice. New York and go visit the military park. And um, I'm excited, God willing, that someday I'll get to bring my grandkids here too someday. Absolutely. Yep. Kelly, thank you so much. Thank you. I so appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.